Hello, this is Ken Ferry with this week's Boots in the Field report. Uh, good to get back into the field after uh, a couple weeks of field days and the Corn College event. I guess I want to take time there to thank all the people who made the trip here to, to Hayworth to Crop Tech for even our field day and then the Corn College events that we had this past week. Uh, not only for partaking in a day, but for participating in the day as far as uh, getting your input into it, especially our, our Canadian farmers to the north. We really appreciated you participating uh, and actually sharing with us how things work north of the border as far as from from your cropping report and what's going on all the way down to how you guys are struggling with some of the same regulation issues and things that we're starting to deal with or have been dealing with depending on what state you're in down here. So uh, big thanks to all the people who came. Another of course, big thanks to all the crop tech employees, the, the farmer helpers, the extended family that came in here, as well as Bill and Missy Bauer, who helped uh, make the thing happen. The event wouldn't be possible with all the people who participated in, in, in making it a, a great week as far as learning goes and participation from everybody involved. In the fields this week, we visited farms, uh, stretches uh, from basically Blue Mound down through Sullivan, Taswell, Dewitt County. So we're kind of a more to the southern part, I guess, of the territory itself. And in the southern part here, south of, of uh, Clinton anyway, we're looking at rain this week from two and a half to five inches down in the Sullivan area. Uh, other areas not so lucky here at uh, Hayworth, we got about seven tenths. Um, but most of the area in the south that got these large rains really didn't need it. Uh, they were actually in exceptionally good uh, shape before that rain came through. And maybe that, especially the five inches, has caused some issues with lodging and uh, waterlogged soils. That'll be a problem. So we did see some um, first, I guess, this week. Uh, I did see the first sudden death in the soybeans. Um, so situation, not a whole field that you could see it from the road. You had to be out in the field to actually find the sudden death plants. Um, I do expect more sudden death to show up in the next 10 days or so. We'll start to be able to pick it up easier uh, and we'll see it out in the field. Both of the fields that we found the sudden death in were earlier planted fields and they were not treated uh, as far as a seed treatment for the sudden death. We also found some pompous root rot and that was again in the wet areas that were been receiving rain pretty much throughout the out the summer itself. Many fields though are, are supporting some pretty tall beans, 53 to 60 inch beans. So far not much lodging but we did find one field that was lodged and at this stage when those beans lodge the trifoliates that end up on the bottom side of that lodging and can't get the sunlight uh, they are going to drop off and then it's going to be get very hard to get the pod fill that we're looking for. So if we can keep these beans upright, even as tall as they are, till we get into R6.5 or so, we'll be all right. But if they lodge before that, we're going to find flat pods or small beans within it. They're always the concern we get with these large beans. Our yield checks in the cornfields this week have ranged from 190 to 265. We are seeing some firing from nitrogen, especially in the areas that received that rain earlier uh, in the year that we were talking about in our earlier podcast, as far as some of those larger rains that came through. Uh, in most cases, that showed up in our nitrate testing. In most cases, the, the rate was adjusted at side dressing time to accommodate for that loss. But some of that loss uh, is visible now in the cornfields. This week we had a field of, in a cornfield that tested positive for uh, steward's wilt. Now we get false positive test uh, from when we actually do the test on it. It's not uncommon to get a false positive, but based on the appearance that I saw in the cornfield and the positive test, I do believe this field had uh, steward's wilt. So the pest team needs to be paying attention for steward's wilt out there, especially if you had a field that was stressed earlier on, uh, it tends to express it more. Most of the area, uh, we're, we're getting some pretty good kernel counts, um, but some of those areas that were really dry this spring and we saw the corn rolling up uh, actually very early in that V4, V5 time frame uh, and staying rolled up. And in those areas, we're starting, as we do our kernel counts, we're starting to see more 14 rounds. Typically outside of that, we got a lot of 16s, 18s, and even 20 rounds, but you're seeing some 14 rounds due to that early stress. 
Now, they're making it up to some extent with kernel depth and length uh, of that ear. We can only make so much of that back up, but we're, I think we're seeing some of the early spring stresses show up in the kernel counts that we're doing in some of those areas. A lot of our yield checks are coming in around 210, 225. This is actually lower than it was last year. A lot of our checks uh, last year were in that 220 to 230, 235 range. Uh, and last year, the 220, 230 yield checks turned into a lot of 230 to 240 bushel corn uh, due to the great uh, fill period that we had, a long and, and good fill period. Growers are asking, uh, can we expect to see the, the same thing again this year? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, in some areas, especially like parts of McLean County here and Tazewell County that have been in, water's getting tight. So as water gets tight right now, this is going to affect um, both the ear fill, the depth of kernels, definitely going to affect these soybeans. And we talk about August rain making the soybeans. So some of these fields that are starting to show moisture stress, that's going to work against us uh, on the pod fill itself. Now we talk about GDUs and GDUs get us to the finish line. So how many GDUs do we get a day? And if we get, if we stay ahead of schedule on GDUs, we're going to get to the finish line uh, pretty early. And a lot of fields that we've been looking at, even as far north as, as Hayworth, um, you know, we're looking at some of these fields are going to finish by the end of August. So we need to be start thinking about a September 10th, September 15th harvest window. The guys to the south are probably going to, going to see it before that. So we need to be ready for an early harvest, but the GDUs are what's going to get us there. Sunshine and good ET rates are what's going to get us the good fill to help stretch out these kernels and take fewer kernels to make a bushel. Getting high GDU rates under cloudy conditions, high humidity, and poor ET rates, we're still going to get to the finish line on time, but we're not going to bring the fill that we saw last year with that uh, phenomenal window that we had. Now, the prior two weeks were excellent from an ET standpoint. This week was kind of rough. We had uh, too many days in there with cloud cover and breeze and stuff, so we gave up a few days. So it kind of depends on what our ET rates are going to be here to the finish and how fast the GDUs are going to come in. We'd be better off with moderate GDUs and excellent sunshine and, and uh, low humidity and higher ETs. Uh, but if it comes at higher temperatures, we're going to rack those GDUs up and we're going to get to the finish line faster and we're probably going to get there without the fill. The other thing that's got me concerned is the GLS. The gray leaf is considerably more intense this year compared to last year. Now, we've had years like this before, but if we compare this year's yields to last year's, you're realizing we didn't have near this gray leaf issue last year. And most fungicides have now run their course. So you can tell the GLS is firing back up and these fields are starting to change. Um, as far as uh, from day to day, every three to five days, if you want to think of the GLS doubling out there. Now this week, we saw susceptible fields that didn't get sprayed. They're starting to turn like it's fall. And you're going to see this more evident in the, in the next 10 days or so as we move forward, that there are going to be some fields that uh, look like they just kind of, you know, getting ready to, to go to harvest like they were a 95-day uh, hybrid out there. And it's actually the GLS that's bringing these fields down. Between the moisture concerns in some areas and the GLS pressure in most areas, I'm not as confident that we're going to get the fill this year that we had last year. So that from here to the finish, I'm not so sure it's going to be as strong as what we uh, were hoping for earlier in the year. Time will tell, but I think the amount of pressure out there is going to make a repeat of last year fairly hard. Now, if we got a good scoring hybrid and it got sprayed or just didn't bring much pressure in, we're in an area with excellent moisture, I still think there's a lot of um, potential for upside fill on it, but just seeing the pressure. We did find aphid colonies in the cornfield this week. They were down low. But as the pest teams go out, it's another thing to keep an eye on is these corn aphid colonies and where you are um, so they don't uh, trash that plant here as we go to finish. There's a really good crop out there, but we need Mother Nature to work with us to make this a great crop. And hopefully that's uh, how it'll play out. Stay up to date. Check out our website at croptechinc.com and subscribe to our podcast, Boots in the Field Report. Keep her safe. Keep her moving.